Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Our scripture today will come from Genesis uh, chapter 25. I'm going to read verses 1 through 11, and then we're going to read Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 to 10, and verses 17 uh, through 19. We have completed uh, the sermons in the series entitled Embracing the God-Filled Life, but since we put Sarah to bed, I thought it would just be right to put Abraham to sleep as well and then remember on next week we're going to be starting a series uh, coming from Exodus chapter 14 Justin we're going to be uh, preaching on there's a book out there by Robert Morgan called the Red Sea Rules and we're going to be preaching from that book it deals with 10 strategies that will help you get through difficult times and we'll start that on next week Genesis chapter 25 Verses 1 through 11, if you have the King James Version, you'll find these holy, divine, and inspired words. Then again, Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. Remember, Sarah now is dead. And Keturah had some sons in chapter 2, and her sons had some sons in chapter 3. Uh, and then verse 5 says, and, and Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. But unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts. But notice he gave all that he had to Isaac, who's the son of the promise. And to the other ones, he gave some gifts. And then he said, now, y'all get on away from Isaac. Look, he sent him away from Isaac. His son, while he yet lived eastward into the east country. Abraham said, I don't want no mess going on now. He, he, he is my, y'all just get away from Isaac. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived, and hundred three score and 15 years, which means Abraham was 175 years old. Then Abraham gave up the ghost. And died in a good old age, an old man, and full of years, and was gathered to his people. And his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah in the field of Ephron, the sons of Zohar the Hittite, which is before Mamre. The field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Heth, there was Abraham buried and Sarah his wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac dwelled by the well of Haroi. Hebrews chapter 8, Hebrews chapter 8, Hebrews chapter 8, verses 10, 8 through 10, says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed and went out not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations whose builder and maker is God. Verses 17 through 19 says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, he was tested, he, he offered up Isaac and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was called, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. For just a few minutes on today, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus, our living Lord, I, I want to talk from the thought from the subject, if you will, and I want to pull my subject right out of verse 8, uh, the last six words that Moses recorded. I, I want to talk from the thought, from the subject, if you will, gathered to his people, gathered to his people. Bridget, these verses in Genesis specifically, they they, they record the end of a great life. Remember, Abraham, God took him from a pagan people 
And that pagan people included his own family because remember the book of Joshua tells us that Terah served idol gods and that's one reason God told Abraham, I want to bless you. I want to, to put you into the promised land. But Abraham, before I do that, I got to get you away from your kindred. I've got to get you away from your father's house because in this time and culture, the child, no matter how old he or she is, you are subject to the rules of your father. So, so whatever the father says, you have to do. And since terror serves idol gods, Abram, I, I got to get you from underneath that rope. So now you don't have to do what he says. Now you are free to obey me. So I need you to get away from daddy and them. And, and God would bless some of us, and he has some stuff for some of us, but we can't cut the umbilical to the cord because we're too hooked up with daddy and them. And Reverend, you know, my mom and them. Well, God, God got something for you in the promised land, and as long as you hanging out with mom and them, you always going to be begging. You're always going to be written. You're always going to be doing this. Sometimes God has to get you away from folk in your own family. And we just going to hang on. Now, I ain't telling nobody here to get away from your family. I mean, you know if you need to do that or not. Don't blame me. Tell me how Reverend said it. He, he wanted to bless him, Patty, but he said, I got, I got to get you away from your daddy, man. Your daddy ain't right. He, Abraham, he, 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 he's the father of the faithful. Jews, Mohammedans, and Christians all refer to Abraham as Father Abraham. God had to get him away from some pagan folk. But there's a blessing in there for us because just because your genealogy got a drunk uncle in it don't mean God won't bless you because Jesus Christ, if you look at his genealogy, there's a prostitute named Rahab, and yet she's in the hall of faith. So, so don't worry if you got a drunk uncle. Everybody got one. Don't worry if you got a nephew or somewhere along the line ain't right. God can reach there and still redeem your path. It don't matter who you connected to. If you're going to walk with God, he can promote you. I don't care who's in your family. I don't care who went to prison in your family. If God got something for you, baby, can't nobody stop it. So you ain't got to be talking about, well, my daddy didn't do this and my mama didn't do this. Oh, God can reach you. He can reach you, baby. He reached this man right out of that pagan family and made him the father of the faithful. So, so, so Abraham, he, he was taught the harsh lessons, Justin, the harsh lessons of faith and obedience. He suffered for God. Now, remember we said that usually those Tommy who God uses the most are usually those who he bruises. The most. Remember, God is no different than some of these companies. He only tests products that he plans on using. So he suffered for God, yet he enjoyed the best God had to offer. But, but in the end, in the end, his life is concluded by Moses in six words. For all of us that, that when we pass, we go away. Some of us, the obituary is like three, four pages in the paper. And I found out when daddy died that they charge you for every word. So quit trying to make up stuff about that Negro and just say he died. Because we all know him. We know all that stuff is false anyway. <laughs> oh, he was a good, yeah, okay, all right. Y'all just wasted a lot of money. But look, but look, here's the father of the faith. Here's the man that Jews, Mohammedans, and Christian Sean Gibson called Father Abraham. And Moses summed up his epitaph in six words, Moses said, and was gathered to his people. It's right there, Jamil, in verse 8. It, it was gathered to his people. Now, as we look at the magnificent obsession Abraham had for God, we want to use him once again as a model. We want to use him, uh, Cal, as our illustration of what embracing the god feel life looks like. Amen. Deacon Henry did an awesome job this morning in, in Sunday school. God bless you, man. God bless you. Praise God for you. Again, get the tape, get the paper, and we got Delbert coming back next week. 
uh, with the same lesson. They got some awesome stuff, and God is working through them. So just praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray for Dale, but uh, uh, for next week. And be here to hear him. Don't just pray for him. Be here to hear what he got to say. So we find this illustration, this example of Abraham, Sister Val English. We look at him, and we say, okay, what does the God-filled life embracing that look like? So we're going to use Abraham. Now, no, no, no. Everybody cannot be an Abraham. But everybody can display the characteristics in their lives that Abraham had in his that made him such a great patriarch. So Sister Odessa, Sister Petri, we, we're going to look at this man. And usually now, when someone dies, three things usually come up at some point during the discussion of the deceased life. Those three things are, number one, how they live their life. We heard this in great detail on yesterday again as we was there uh, to share with our brother uh, Deacon Andrew Williams Jr. in the home going of his mom, uh, Orb Warfield. We heard that, how uh, she lived her life. And if you hadn't heard it, ask Bobby Holly how she lived it. And he going to mention something about a jawbone and something else. But you see Bobby and you ask him about that. <laughs> <laughs> So number one, uh, we, care, we talk about how they live their life. Secondly, we talked about the events surrounding their life. And one of the greatest lines of all, all time, we got to get that, we got to get that canonized, that, that, that Deacon Williams' mom didn't have no money because Reagan was sitting in the chair. He was in the seat, so she couldn't, you know, uh, we, and from the 80s, we, we remember Slicky Run. Yeah, yeah, he is still shaking, I think. We remember Run. Uh, and number three, we talk about where did they stand with the Lord. And that's really the main thing, Deacon Bonner. That's really the main thing, where, where they stand with the Lord. I don't know sometimes when families come to us, they had these long things about where their daddy worked, where their mama worked. All the preacher want to know is was they saved. You keep all the other stuff for you. That sounds good, but that ain't helping them. Now not they dead. It don't matter where they work. It don't matter if they got a watch. It don't matter if they was never late. They dead now. And right now they're going to need a savior. So I'm not, in, I'm not saying it's not okay to have all that, but we ain't interested in all that. Just saving y'all some time. We want to know was they saved, and then we can go from there. All right? So now these are the three things that we want to highlight this morning for your consideration. Number one, first thing we want to highlight as we look at Abraham who shows us how to live the God-filled life. Number one, Sister uh, Cummings, we first of all want to look at how he lived his life. How he lived his life. And you, you live your eulogy. That's why there wasn't too much to say yesterday with Sister Orby. You live your eulogy. The preacher can't preach you in hell and can't preach you in heaven. If you ain't live right, ain't nothing I can say to make you right now. And I ain't finna lie over nobody. He wasn't no good. Take him out and back and bury him. I mean, why are we making up lies? He wasn't no good. Y'all know that. He lived a life of faith. Abraham did. It was a life of faith. One of the clearest and most striking things about Abraham's life is how he lived his life minute by minute, hour by hour, moment by moment, step by step, and he lived it by faith in God. This is the kind of life that God wants every one of his children to live and to have. If the people of God could ever learn, Deacon Henry, to let go of their lives and to leave them in the hands of the Lord, it would revolutionize our lives forever and we won't have all them struggles and with worry and fear and we won't be on Prozac, Mozac, Bozac, Liliac. We won't be on all that lack. If we would just learn to trust God. Well, I want God to show me. Well, God done showed you already. Listen, if you are not acting on what God has already clearly revealed, you want him to show you something else? I mean, you won't come to Sunday school now, but you want to know the will of God. You won't come to Bible study now, but you want God to split your head open and pull his divine will. And as one deacon say, you want him to reach his lily white hand. I don't know where he got that from. And just put it in your head. 
You won't bring tithes and offerings now and you praying for God to